In today's Money Monday, we all want our children to have it a bit easier and better than we had it, of course. But how far do we go when it comes to paying for their college education? Well, we've got Kyle Wingfield from Finley Alexander Wealth Management to give us some insight on that. How are you? I'm doing well. This is another one of my favorite topics because I'm going to ask a bothersome question. But I think I might as well be the guy that's unpopular for a few moments to be popular for a long time. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can ask the questions now. What is it, Kyle? Well, so my thing is this. College costs a lot of money, and it's been like that for a long time, at least the last 22 plus years. And my question is, is is the ROI there? It's the return on investment there. I mean, when you think about how much it will cost to go to like a state or private school over a four or five year period, parents are are, are pulling out all stops and writing $400,000, $500,000 checks because they don't want the kid to be in debt. I get that one, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, solve the debt problem for your kid here. But what, what's the job market look like? What's the starting salary there? Mm-hmm. Are you on track for retirement? Because you just wrote a half a million dollar check, for example, to a fine, to an educational institution, but your future okay. wasn't that important because now you don't have enough capital perhaps for retirement, or you could have more because people underestimate their needs. And then you cause another problem in the future, right? So now your kid is an adult and now you're like, we don't have enough money. I don't know what happened. Mom got sick or whatever. And now you're leaning on them and you're creating a sandwich generation out of them. And that's not fair to them. You know, we might not have a crystal ball, but we also don't know what the right decision is. So what, <laughs> what should we be doing? You need to be saving money. You need to be saving money because we know college may happen for them. There's no guarantee. They might want to get into the trades or they might want to do something else, but they may not want to go to college, right? So my first thing is, Try not to pigeonhole your money. Try your best to just save the money and have that capital accumulate because it doesn't matter. Sure, 529s have advantages and they work, right? But also, what if they don't go to school? What if they don't do, don't do any of that? If you're just saving money and accumulating capital in the most tax efficient way that has as much of that capital accessible when that moment happens, whether it's college or mom or dad, I have this great idea for a startup business or, hey, I... I've got a job in the trades, I'm doing well. And then you want to gift, you say, hey, why don't we, we save money for college, you're not doing it. Well, how about we help you start building some wealth by helping you acquire your first piece of real estate or a couple of investment properties. That's how I'm thinking, play the long game. You can borrow money for college. And I still don't think it's fully worth it at this point. Or you can save aggressively with that same energy, but it's for your future and a better future for your family to extend generational wealth and to pass on some really strong fundamentals and principles about saving and investing. Don't pitch, I, I just am not into pigeonholing money. I'm not saying 529s are good or bad. I'm just saying yeah. ask that question. On my website, I've got the uh, what I call it the college the the college scorecard, and what it does is it looks at all the places you could park money to pay for education. Now, I'm saying air quotes education, right? Because I don't like pigeonholing money. The more money you have, the more options you have, but you want freedom from it because you don't know what your kid's going to do. You're, you're, you're vicariously possibly living through them at this moment. You don't know if they're going to go to college, right? You hope they do. Now, it breaks down every place you can park money, and it breaks down all the different trade-offs. So I always say if you hold it back like this from the screen, it uses red, green, yellow, right? So you look at – sometimes clients or, or families I work with look at it and say, well, I'm just going to pick the approach that gives me the more green lights than, than red or yellow. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't mean one thing's bad or, or, or good. It just have the information, know the impact of the decision you're making. Because remember, you can't borrow money for retirement. Are you actually saving enough? And if you could come up with 500 grand so your kid's not in debt, come up with 500 grand so you have the retirement you deserve and you want so you can be prepared in this future that's going to be really expensive. Yeah, it already is, right? You are the father of three sons. I got to ask you this last question. How do you keep yourself from getting too emotional about this when it comes? All right. So one, emotions kill cash. The other thing is, I've done this for so long. The only thing I get emotional about is when I'm like, okay, I I set up the automated savings and investing for them. The only thing I get emotional about is how can I come up with more to put in there. Right. Like I'm that's where my emotion sits so that when I'm human, like everybody else. So when I I'm now playing a game in, in 2022, when I decide I want to go do a frivolous spin, 400 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever it is, I go, I don't need that. And I take that three or 400 bucks and I put it, put it towards their future. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and I already got my, my automated 
set up, right? But every time I'm about to go on, every time I go on Amazon to be like, I don't need this, but I want it. I don't need this, but I want it. It adds up. You put in your cart, uh, 340, I don't need this. Delete, take the three, discipline, take 340, boom, put in their investments. I'll tell you what, when they're 21, 25, they're going to look back and they're going to say, dang, dad, thanks. And I'm just doing for them. Every generation wants to do for the next generation what they wish was done for them. And so I'm just doing what I wish my parents had insight to do, but nobody was ever talking to them right. about That's how to do it. Right. Yes. And you are having these conversations online all the time. Give us yeah. a website again where we can get some of these materials as well. Yeah. So FinleyAlexander.com, you want to have a conversation, we can Zoom. I mean, I don't care where you are in the United States. If you just want to have a conversation with someone who matches that energy, has the focus, and I'm thinking about you, hey, whether we work together or not, if I can illuminate some things in your world to help you have you move in the best direction uh, for your future, that's what it's all about. So visit us at FinleyAlexander.com, learn about who we are, and see if we're a good fit. All right, Kyle Wingfield, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned.